Welcome class. Today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Euler's method for finding values of functions. Um, Euler's method is a way of estimating the value of a function utilizing differential equations. Uh, so Euler's method is used for finding the value of a function y at a particular value x. We were given the differential equation for y and an initial condition relating x and y. Euler's method uses the slope-intercept method for linear equations to estimate values for y along what is called the step size for x, called h for s. So we'll use the differential equation dy dx to give us the slope for the linear equation and our value of y as the starting point for the next line. So let's say, for example, what we know is our initial condition Our initial condition is y1, or actually, excuse me, y of what we'll call x1 equals y1. Or we'll call y, let's see, we'll call it y of x0 equals y0. Okay, so that'll be our starting point. So we start there, and so the beginning point for our y values is going to be at y0. All right, so we'll start at y0, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add to that, and we're going to evaluate, we're going to have dy dx evaluated at x0, y0. So if you kind of imagine a slope field, and we'll take a look at a drawing of this in, in not too distant future, you have a slope field, and on that slope field, the slope of x0, y0 becomes the slope for your line. And then we'll multiply that by h, right? And h is basically what we call like, a, it's a delta x, right? That is, is that it's the change in x, and we call that the step size. So we'll have y0 plus the slope, okay? times h will equal now our y1, okay? And if you kind of see that, it's got that interpretation, it looks like here's our y-intercept b plus, and here's our slope, m times x, okay? So we've got b plus m times x, or mx times b, mx plus b, which is our slope-intercept form. The difference here is, is that y naught does not actually, um, is not actually going to be on the y-axis, okay? And, in addition to that, our m is going to be changing. It's going to be changing as we change the differential equation dy dx. All right. The one thing that is going to change the stay the same is this uh, step size. So the step size is going to remain the same as we iterate over and over and over again. So now, once we know what y1 is, what we'll do is we'll place y1 into the equation. And so our next uh, next step is going to be y1 plus, and it'll be dy dx our derivative, but now evaluated at x1, y1, okay, times h. And let's talk a little bit about what x1 is. We know what y1 is. It's the result of the last one. What x1 is going to be is it's going to be our value for x0 plus the step size, okay? So we're going to take x0 plus the step size, h, okay, and that'll give us our x1, right? So we're just going to actually iterate to the next step, iterate to the next step, iterate to the next step. Okay, so that'll give us y1, and now that'll end up equaling y2, and then we'll do this again. We'll get y2 now. That's now our new y value, so that's the place where we're going to start our line again, plus dy dx times x0, or excuse me, x2 plus y, or x2, y2, so it's going to be evaluated at x2, y2 times h, and that'll equal y3. So now what this is, is it's the previous value, y2 is now going to be the new y value, and x2 is going to be simply x1 plus h. So we'll iterate x1 by the step size, and we will iterate, um, and we will change y2 by utilizing the sl uh, slope-intercept equation. So let's do one more to demonstrate. So now the new one will be the new value for y is going to be y3 plus dy dx evaluated at x3, y3 times h, and that'll then be y4. And what x3 is going to be is it's going to be the previous value of x, x2, plus our step size. So each and every time we take a step, we've got to iterate x1 by the step size, so x1 gets iterated by the same amount, okay? And y gets changed by the amount based upon our slope.
Okay, and that's the process of Euler's method. Okay, so here's the process. I think probably it's easier to. So let's take a look at an example here for using Euler's method. Um, and one of the things we want to get is that Euler's method is an algorithm. And when we, what we mean by algorithm is a process that's an iterative process. We do something over and over and over again until we hit whatever threshold that we're looking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to utilize that Euler's method, the method that we looked at, until we hit a certain number. So let's look at an example. We'll see dy dx equals x squared minus y squared. We're going to have y of 0 equals 1, and h is going to equal 0.25. And remember, this is our step size. h is our step size. And we're going to go until we hit y of 1.5. Okay? So what I'm going to think about this in terms of is I'm going to think about it in terms of my x values. I want to go from 0 to 1.5, and I'm going to go in steps of 0.25. So what I'm going to do, just to help me visualize this, and you don't have to do this, but this is something that I use to help myself visualize. I start out with x0, okay, and that's equal to 0, right? That's going to be the first one. And I'm going to skip a, a step, and so then it's going to be x1 will equal 0.25, x2, well then we're going to add another 0.25, so that's going to be 0.5. So these are the step sizes. We're going to go by that step size. x3 will equal 0.75, x4 will equal 1 x5 will equal 1.25, and my sixth iteration, my sixth time that I find my y value, x6 is going to be 1.5. So those are going to be my y value, my x values, and they're going to correspond to getting me all the way up to 1.5 by steps of 0.25. So let's kind of do this Euler's method, kind of thinking along the lines in terms of I'm actually kind of drawing lines using our slope-intercept form, right? I'm going to take the slope that I get, the value of my derivative, times my step size, okay, and plus whatever my previous y value was. So let's first start out, I first start out by finding dy dx at, in this case, 0, 1, because that's my first value. And I'll plug this in, and that's going to give me then 0 squared minus 1 squared, which is going to equal negative 1. So that's my slope for the first part of the line. So now y1, my next value that I'm going to end up here when I get to x1, is going to end up equaling It'll be my y0, so 1 plus, and it'll be negative 1, that slope, times my step size of 0.25, which ends up equaling 0.75. So that's my, my uh, y1. Okay, so I've got an x1, y1. Basically what I've done is i essentially drawn a line with uh, a slope negative 1 from um, 0, 1 down to 0.75. So let's kind of take a look at that, and we'll do that in... in uh, in a drawing form. So what I'm going to do here is I start at 0, 1, okay, and what I'm going to do is basically there's my slope of 1, okay, so here is 0.25, that first line is going to take me down to 0.75, and so this point right here, that's where we get to, we get to 0 0.25 comma 0 0.75 using that slope that we had, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine that I have a slope field, right, I have a slope field on my, um, uh, on my Cartesian coordinate plane, and I'm gonna figure out what the next slope is, the one for 0 0.25, 0 0.75, and then that's gonna become the slope for my next point. So let's go take a look at that. So we'll first put in that we're gonna find dy dx, and we're now gonna find it at the point 0 0.25, 0 0.75. So that's gonna equal 0 0.25 squared minus 0 0.75 squared which will end up equaling 0.625. So now my y2, my next point in the iteration is gonna be, we'll start at 0.75, my previous y, and we'll add to that, excuse me, that's negative point, uh, excuse me, that's 0.625. Sorry, this ends up giving me negative 0.5. So plus negative 0.5 times 0.25. Okay, here's my slope, the slope that I got for dy dx, and then multiplied by h. And so now what I have is this is going to end up equaling 0 0.625. That's going to be my value for the next, the next y value. So let's go and actually graph that too. So I go in here into my graph, and now I'm going to 0 0.625. So we notice that that slope got smaller. Instead of being a slope of 1, it was actually a slope of 0.5 which makes sense that now we're only going half as far or half the distance, okay? And so this one now is 0 0.5 comma 0 0.625. That's the next point in my graph and on my, in my method, the next iterative point. So now we'll go to y3, 
we're going to try and find y3. So dy dx, and now we're at 0.5 comma 0.625. That will equal 0.5 squared minus 0.625 squared. Okay, and now this is going to give me a slope of negative 0.140625. Right, that slope's getting smaller and smaller. And if you looked at the slope field for this differential equation, you'd see that that's what's happening. As we get closer and closer to, say, for example, down the y-axis, right, we're going to get it smaller in terms of negative. So this now y3 is going to equal my previous x value, or y value, excuse me, 0.625, previous y value, plus, and this will be my slope, negative 0.140625, times, again, my step size. And remember, we're going to be multiplying by the step size each and every time. And that'll end up giving me 0.58984375. Now, what you'll notice here is I really want to like keep as much rounding to the end as possible. And the reason why I want to do that is because what this is is an estimation. The more I round, the more likely it is that what I'm going to end up with is I'm going to get more and more error as I round more and more. So I'm going to try and keep it you know, as many decimal places as possible. Now, at some point, it gets kind of absurd, so why don't you just keep it at, well, I don't know. Let's keep it at 8. So we'll keep it at this number uh, that we have right here, okay? So now I'm going to go in, and I'm just going to call this 0.589 dot, dot, dot. Let's take a look at our graph. So now my next value is going to be at 0.75, and it'll be at 0.589. So we see that the slope remains negative, which is just fine, but what we end up having is, is that now it's less. We have a, a, a smaller slope now because basically our x value is getting bigger and our y value is in fact getting smaller, right? So we're increasing in x, right? But y is decreasing. And since the, the dy dx is x squared minus y squared, that means that our slopes are gonna get smaller. So let's take a look at the next value. So the next value here that we got is gonna be y4. Okay, but first we've got to evaluate dy dx. Now, I'm going to tell you that dy dx at this next point, which is point, uh, is 1, excuse me, point um, point 0.75, comma, and this point 0.589, dot, 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 all right? I actually went in with a computer to find this, uh, this particular value, but you can do it just as simply with your calculator. And I ended up with 0.214, five, eight, four, three, five, one. Okay, which is interesting because now our slope is actually starting to increase. And it makes sense, right, because x is actually bigger than y. So now that x is bigger than y, what we expect is that our, our slope is gonna increase on the slope field, right? And so we're actually gonna end up with a positive slope uh, for our line. So y3, or excuse me, yes, y uh, y4 rather, is gonna end up equaling Point five eight nine dot 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 plus point two one four five so on and so forth times point two five. Okay? And that will end up equaling point six four three four eight nine eight three eight. Alright? So a little bit less than point six five. So we go back to my, my graph. What I'm going to end up doing now is I've iterated again, but now I'm starting to increase, right? And in fact, I'm increasing more. I've now actually gone up quite a bit more, okay? And I'm now above even the, uh, the value that I was at 0.5. So there is my third value. This is 1, and it's basically 0 0.6434, et cetera, okay? Now, let's take a look at the next ones, and let's talk about how many more iterations that we're going to have to do for this. So we're now at y4, okay? So what we know is that we're gonna need to get to x6, or x6 is 1.5, so basically we're gonna need to get to x6, y6, okay? So we've got a couple more iterations that we're gonna do. Essentially, we've got two more left, all right, that we're gonna need in order to figure out what this value is. So I'm gonna go in, I'm now gonna find dy dx. Now at this point, I'm gonna find it for 1, comma, 0.5, or 0.64, 3.4, right, my next y value, and that's going to end up equaling 0.58592. So once again, we're now actually starting to increase by uh, quite a bit, 
we're actually going to get uh, quite a bit more and our slope is going to start rising because the x values are rising. So now y4 is going to equal my previous value for y, 0 0.6434, etc. plus and my slope 0.58592 times my step size 0.25, which ends up giving me 0.78997045. Okay, and that's my next point, right? That's the next value in my x values. And so let's go and graph that. Point seven eight, so it's actually now going on a bit above the point seven five, so it's right about here, right? And we now have that increasing slope. We have that expectation that that's what's going to happen, okay? Now we'll take a look. One more iteration, okay? We now need dy dx, okay, at one point two five comma point seven eight nine nine. 7 dot, dot 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 and what we get now for that value is going to end up being 0.938447328 okay and so y5 which uh is the next value inside of my my values okay which is the next point that we're going to go up okay is going to end up being equal to 0.78997 plus point nine three eight four four seven three two eight times 0 0.25, okay? And that ends up giving me now 1.02, four five eight one eight seven. excuse me, that ends up equaling 1.02458187. And what we now know is, is that that's going to be the point, right? This is 1.5 comma 1.02458187. So that's the result of our iterations, right? We've got 1.5 comma 1.02458187. And so in fact, y of 1.5 equals, excuse me, y of 1.5 equals 1.02458-1877, okay? And that's without any rounding. There's a little truncation, um, but not a ton. And this is an estimate. Now, if we were to go in and actually solve for the differential equation, we'd get something that's fairly close to this one. This one isn't too far off, okay? Now, let's take a look at our graph. We're going to add this in. So this is going to actually take me up a little bit, a little bit over 1.02. And we could see here now, if we look at the x's, look at our x values, I got 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 1, 1 1.25, and then 1.5. So basically what we've done is imagined a slope field and drawn in lines along that slope field. And so this is our 1.02 or comma 1.5 comma 1.02 four five eight one eight seven seven and that is the value for our equation okay so that's how Euler's uh, method works I'm gonna do it once here we'll do some practice with it it just takes a little bit of practice um, you know basically you've got an equation that you're gonna be working with it's the slope equation and you just need to know what the algorithm is so let's take a look at that algorithm one more time so we start out here we're gonna have we want to find y of x naught equals y naught that's my initial condition and we'll start with that, and then we'll iterate. We'll make that y not the bottom value. Then we have my slope times h, and that gives me y1, okay? Then I'm gonna take y1, and I'm gonna put that in along with my new x iteration, like my x not plus my value for h, okay? And that is gonna end up equaling y2, okay? And then I'm gonna put that in the next iteration. And we're gonna do this over and over until we eventually hit the value that we're looking for until we end up getting the um, endpoint or the value for the function that we're looking for. And that's the entirety of the process. Okay, so that's the process for Euler's method. Um, get some practice in, we'll do a little bit of work on this and uh, you guys should do great.